She's a killer from the north, bringing dead ones back and forth because she likes it. Ah ah ah! She's a walker. Whoa whoa whoa! She's a walker. Not talking about a silly stalker, no. And this walker is mine. Sorry for this little update, this is due to some fun sci-fi conventions and charity events. This is our White Walker Queen. I know there's no White Walker Queen, I don't think so, I haven't seen one in uh, Game of Thrones. I really hope you love Game of Thrones just as much as we do, or I do myself have seen it, but I promise to watch. I'm going to relax for maybe two minutes more and then I need to get ready with my shopping for Christmas. All the presents, I'm not done yet. So don't forget to subscribe and tell us what your holiday plans are. We want to know. I'm swimming away. This tutorial requires intermediate skills and it takes about one to one and a half hour to prepare and just as long to finish off with all that painting, the streaks, the fading, the yeah, everything. Anyways, if you don't have all the stuff we list here, go ahead and use what you got. Let's begin by creating the prosthetic pieces for the face. So we prep our face cast with a little bit of clay. Cause then when we cover all this with latex paste, those little clay pieces will make holes in our prosthetic. And later on, we will fill those holes with cotton. But first, shape the clay. Find yourself a nice White Walker reference image from the series and build on that. You can pretty much use any kind of clay in this situation. If you don't have a face cast, you might be able to do this on a totally flat surface, but it might not fit as well. You can as always use some sort of bowl or round shaped object to place out the clay on as well as the latex paste coming later that might do the trick. And for those of you who want to create your own face cast, just check out our tutorial for that. When we are satisfied with our walker face, we bring out the latex and the flower. Let's create latex paste. Pour a little bit of flour into the latex and mix it and stir it. And if you feel it's too loose, add a little bit more of that flour and mix it until it feels just right. And then we apply that onto our face cast and clay. Smear it all out. Add a little bit of latex on your fingers and you can smear it out a lot easier. We don't want it too thick, so just a little bit to cover it all up. And we are doing this in sort of four pieces. We are doing the forehead piece and two cheekbone pieces as well as the chin. They will all be interconnected when we create them on the face cast, but we will cut them up in separate pieces later. Continuing with the cheek pieces, paste it all out, go over it with a brush to smooth the surface, just like this, and make sure you use a brush you're not afraid to lose because it's going to be ruined after this. And we go on to the chin, same process, and then we take any kind of pointy tool we have, dip it in a little bit of latex and start making those little marks on it. You can create the marks any way you like and when you're done just go over them a little bit with a brush, fade them out a little bit, we don't want them too obvious. And then again continue on the cheek pieces, same thing, do the streaks, then go over the whole thing again with a brush, making them a little bit more subtle. 
and we are doing this all over going back and forth with the pointy tool and the brush until we like the texture and of course there is no right and wrong here just find a reference photo of a white walker and create the marks in the face accordingly And this time, as I said before, this is not a super thick layer, it's pretty thin, so this is what we got. We'll leave that to dry and start off with the suit. And for that we're gonna need a few mattresses. Yoga mats or sleeping mats with some sort of uh, texture is fine. We also have a car mat in rubber. Beginning with the neck piece, again we are looking at a reference photo of a walker to create that shape. Cut the piece out from that board, so you have a template. And to make sure all the sides are equal and even, just fold it and trim that edge a little bit. And now both sides are identical. And then if you want to, just measure, make sure it's big enough or small enough for your neck. We begin by using our textured mat, put the template on there, draw along the line if you want to, or just cut straight away like Ellie does. Then you have a piece like this, fabulous, it looks good and the texture does the trick as well. And then we repeat the whole process making another piece just like this, almost looks the same but a little bit smaller this time. There we go. And when we put this together, we want the smooth edge inwards on the side pieces and the textured side up on the front piece to make sure the pieces stick together and to give them a little bit more hold and make them bend like we want to. We use a bit of wire, push that straight into that soft material and put the whole thing together. Remember, the center piece has the texture outwards and the other ones inwards. Cool. We put the whole thing together with glue. Ellie is using a glue gun. You can use any kind of glue you got. Push this stuff together. When the glue is dry, we might want to trim the edges a little bit more since we can put the whole thing on and try it now. You can make this material bend and stay bent if you heat it up while it's bent and just let it cool off. This is a great way to shape it exactly like you want it. There's a lot of trimming going on. There. Now we are satisfied with that piece. I know, it looks kind of rough, but hey, this is a rough white walker, right? <laughs> now we need some detailing. And again, the same process. Make a template out of that thick paper. Now we're using the yoga mat that has no texture at all. And to take away the sharp edges, we cut sort of like a wedge shape, just cutting along the edge, all around the edge in a 45 degree angle, like that, rounding the whole piece off. Fantastic, this is starting to look good. Now we need that split little two-piece to attach on top of the whole thing. And there it is, fits nicely and then again fade down those edges so it doesn't look like it's a square piece. There, nice. Cut it in two, like a half oval shape, not just straight off there. Nicely, nicely. Now just attach them to our previous piece and we are good to go. Again we are using a glue gun and if you are to make sure you keep track of where your hands are because that glue is really hot. Stage one complete. There we go. 
Now for the chest, and we break out an old crappy bra, and this time we're gonna cut stuff out from a rubber car mat. So we line it along the cups there, and cut the piece out. Again, this is just a random piece shape that we thought suitable. You can make it any shape you like, Pretty much the same process as before, but this time we are actually using that square pattern to count and divide and make it even. A car mat like this we bought new for practically no money, but I'm sure if you are low on cash you can probably get one pretty cheap or free at a junkyard or a used car dealership. We're gonna attach the rubber on the edge of the bra like that, and again we are using the glue gun. Any glue will do. I'm gonna make a song about that. Any glue will do. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, with that chest plate in place, we're using the same piece of cardboard we used before. And we simply make a smaller shape this time. Cut that out using the yoga mat. We get some variation in our creation. Another awesome song rhyme. My god, I'm on fire. And just like we did on the smaller pieces, we cut down the edge in an angle, giving the whole piece a more rounded look and feel. To wrap our chest piece up, we add a little bit of detail, and then we recycle the two pieces we used to cut out the cups and place them on the straps, just like that. Now for the shoulders, and the funny thing is, the way we have cut this rubber mat, we get two perfect shoulder pieces, one and two. A little bit of trimming, <laughs> they almost fit perfectly right away. Nice. To make sure everything sits exactly where we want to, we put together the shoulder pieces with the neck piece while it's on using the glue gun. And again, and again, stay clear of that glue. You don't want it on your skin because it's really hot. Put it on the edges, glue the pieces together. When that glue sets, take the whole thing off and add additional glue in the edges there to make it stick. And for additional support, some gaffer tape. You can never go wrong with that. We will mess these pieces up later on with some white spray paint. But for now, let's dig in to the head. Because now our latex pieces are ready to pull off. For all of our regular viewers, you know by now that you need to powder all that latex all along the edges and all along the inside as you peel those pieces off. And in our case, the whole thing is one big chunk of latex, like that. If any of the clay sticks in the holes, just peel it out. And like I mentioned before, this is going to be cut up in four pieces. The chin piece, the cheek pieces and the forehead piece. So cut them out one by one, trim the edges. You will need to make some trimming adjustments later on for sure when you apply it, but there you go. There are the pieces. Talent shout out. All right, cuts with guts. Go check this account out, but be sure to have eaten your food and don't have anything in your mouth because you're gonna throw up when you go there. Check that out. Application time, and we begin with a classic putting Vaseline on our brows to make sure they don't stick in the latex. And there we stuff our little prosthetic with cotton. So all those hollowed out areas we stuff with a little cotton to keep them puffed up. Then we apply latex to both the prosthetic and our face and make sure you don't get that latex in your eyes because the prosthetic is going down quite a bit there underneath the brows. Secure it by lining it with latex all around. Basically the same process for the other pieces. I'm sticking latex pieces to my whole face in Swedish, yes. Jag sätter latexbitar i hela ansiktet. The 
leave that to dry and then head on for color and yeah you guessed it white is our main color here along with the bluish purple pretty much cover your whole face and the prosthetics in white and then we switch to that purple bluish tone for all those little streaks and cracks and stuff in the face begin with our eyes get a nice purple raccoon look and then you go in with black closest to the eye and blend that outwards and I have graded this video to look more bluish than purple because that's the color we're going for and for added dynamics we go in with a little dark purple there on our eyelids and around gently fading it out and Ellie is also using this dark tone here to get those angry brows going as well as shading the nose. Now to bring out those cracks and lines in the face, this is gonna be a process. First we line all our kind of horn bumps all over then going in painting all those streaks and you can paint as many or as few as you like really just find yourself a reference photo and go mental and then we switch to a clean brush and smudge them all out a little bit We will revisit the hairline later on with a bit more darkness. Now that everything is blended, we go back again and repaint those lines. So now we get both the intense lines as well as the subtle ones. And then we do the exact same process again with all those cracks and lines in the face. Just paint them roughly like that and then go blend it all out with a larger brush and a sponge dipped in a little white. We need some black shading on our nose and around our mouth as well. Whenever these white walkers are present in the television series Game of Thrones, the scenes are graded pretty hard, so everything is very bluish. And just like we did before, we go back once more, adding those lines and then blending them out nicely. But not too much, of course. Still want them to be lines. Then we go in with black and shade down our whole face, darken everything down, almost like a skeleton. Alright, two and a half years later we are ready, let's go for the hair and we need to get that white, so we are using white hair spray paint. We go on and use that on our body as well and also on our awesome gear. So just put that whole thing on and go nuts with a white color. You can paint it with any kind of color but it looks kind of cool with the spray paint here. All painted white we go in and shade them boobies as well. One last round of black on the face there because we are gonna use very very bright light when we shoot this we need lots of darkness where there is supposed to be darkness finish up with some detailed streaks under the eyes as well as shading that little 
symbol or ornament in the middle of our neck. But that shading came after the sprinkled snow, of course. We don't do stuff in the right order here. <laughs> And with a little bit of shading on that neck piece and some white color to rough it up a little, we are done. Cue snowflakes in the studio. <laughs> there you go, there is your female white walker with a bitchy face, looking all angry. And as usual, we hope you like this lengthy cosplay makeup tutorial thingy. And this time we didn't break this up into many tutorials, we kept it as one. And since this was a super long video, we want to ask how many of you actually watched it from the first second to the last? The whole thing. Tell us in the comments. Next video is coming very soon. Stay tuned. We love you. Mwah. Bye.